In our last video, we learned the different parts of a microscope and their corresponding functions. If you haven't still watched our video about the different parts of a microscope and their functions, you may pause this video to watch it. The link is posted on the description box. In this video, we are going to learn the different ways on how to use, care for, and manipulate the microscope and how to prepare a specimen slide and focus a specimen using the compound microscope. We are also going to learn the process of getting the magnification of the specimen. Are you ready to learn? Let's go! A microscope is a powerful tool in the field of biology. It allows us to observe and study objects or organisms that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. In our previous lesson, you learned that a microscope has different parts and each part has a specific function. Before we study how to observe an object using a microscope, let us first study the different ways on how to take care of a microscope. This will prevent you from doing things that may damage the microscope. These tips about the proper use and care of the microscope will also help you and your school maintain the equipment for efficient and longer use. Here are the things that you need to remember. Number 1. Get the microscope from its box or the cabinet. Always carry the microscope with both hands. Hold the arm with one hand and place the other hand under the base for support. Number 2. Put the microscope down gently on the laboratory table with its arm facing you. Place it about 7 cm away from the edge of the table. Number 3. Check the microscope before and after use. Report any missing or damaged part to your teacher. Number 4. Use a clean tissue paper or soft cloth-like old t-shirt to clean the mechanical parts of the microscope. Number 5. Use only a special lens paper to clean the lenses. Do not touch the glass parts of the lenses with your fingers. Number 6. Prevent liquids, especially acids and alcohol, from spilling on any part of the microscope. Always use a cover slip in observing wet mounds. Number 7. Check for moisture such as from condensation of human breath in the eyepiece. This may happen due to prolonged observation of specimens. Wipe with lens paper. Number 8. Avoid tilting the microscope while observing wet mounts. Water might flow into the mechanical parts of the microscope causing them to rise. Select a chair with suitable height so that both forearms can be rested on the table during observation. Number 9. Never store the microscope in a chemical laboratory or any place where there are corrosive fumes. Make sure there are silica gel packs inside microscope boxes or storage cabinet to absorb moisture. And number 10. Keep your microscope in its box when not in use. And those are the different ways that you need to remember when using a microscope. Let us now learn the ways on how to examine and focus specimens. The specimen to be used depends on the topic that you want to study. If you want to study the animal cell, you can scrape a tiny bit of sample from your cheek using a clean toothpick. On the other hand, if you want to study a plant cell, you can use the skin of an onion. When using a plant or animal specimen, make sure to slice the sample thinly in order for a light to pass through the specimen. In this video, we are going to use the letter E cut out from a newspaper as a specimen. This will be your practice specimen before using specimens of organisms. Here are the steps that you need to follow in preparing the specimen in a wet mount. A wet mount is a glass slide holding a specimen suspended in a drop of liquid such as water for microscopic examination. The first step in preparing a wet mount is to cut out letter E from a newspaper clipping. Number 2. Place the cut out letter E in a glass slide. Third, add a drop of water using a dropper or cotton ball. Number 4. Position the cover slip 45 degrees with one side touching the edge of the water and slowly lower the cover slip until it covers the specimen. And the fifth step is to tap the cover slip gently with an eraser end of a pencil until the bubbles move towards the cover slip's edges. The next process is viewing the specimen. A filled-up view is the bright circle of light under the microscope. 
Remember not to use direct sunlight as a source to view a specimen because it can permanently damage the retina of the eyes. The first step in viewing the specimen is to put the slide on the stage. Make sure that the specimen is in the center of the hole in the stage and under the low power objective. Hold it firmly with the stage clips. Number 2. Watching from the side, carefully lower the body tube until the end of the low power objective almost touches the cover slip. Number 3. Look through the eyepiece, slowly turn the course adjustment upwards to raise the objective until the letter E appears. Continue until you see the letter clearly. This would indicate that you have focus on it already. Describe the position and image of the letter as seen under the microscope. As you can see, the position of the letter E is inverted. The image is also larger or is enlarged as compared to the one using the eyes only. With the microscope, the letter also appears grainy and not in straight lines. What do you think is the reason why the image formed is inverted? This is because the compound microscope uses more than one lenses, located on the eyepiece and in the objective lenses. This is also because these lenses are convex lenses. Aside from the image form, this also affects the movement of the slide. For example, if you will turn the stage knob to the right, the specimen slide will move in the left direction. If you will turn the stage knob in an upward direction, the specimen slide will move in the downward direction. To shift to the high power objective, raise the body tube first. Looking from the side, turn the revolving nose piece to put the high power objective in place. What do you think is the reason why do you have to watch from the side when changing objectives? Correct, it is because objectives are of different lengths. This is done to prevent accidental crushing of the objectives into the slide and breakage of an objective lens, a slide, or cover slip. When the high power objective is already in place, using the fine adjustment it slowly lowers the objective till it almost touches the cover slip. Looking through the eyepiece, turn the fine adjustment until you see the clearest image. Why should the fine adjustment now be used only with the high power objective? It is because the high power objective is longer and can easily crash into the cover slip and slide. Observe the image formed under the 40 times objective and 100 times objective. What can you notice? You are right, the field of view gets smaller as you increase the power of the lens. As you increase the magnification, it will come to the point that you will only see a portion of the specimen. Let us now discuss the magnifying power of the microscope. You already know that the microscope is used to enlarge images from its actual size in order to see internal structures of living things. The ability to enlarge an image of the object's length in one direction but not changing the actual size is called magnification. This means that the specimen increases its area by the square of its magnification. So how are you able to identify the magnification of an object or a specimen? The numeric inscription written in the eyepiece and objective tells us how many times the microscope actually magnifies an object. Let's say for example, the written inscription in the eyepiece is 10 times. This means that the eyepiece can magnify the specimen 10 times. This is also true with objective lenses. The written inscription on the oil immersion objectives is 100. This means that it can magnify the specimen 100 times. The high power objective is 40 which means it can magnify the specimen 40 times. And the low power objective is 10 times which means it can magnify the specimen 10 times. The object's magnification can be computed by multiplying the magnification of the inscription in the eyepiece by the magnification inscription of the objective. Take a look at the example below. What do you think is the magnification of the plant cell if the magnification of the eyepiece is 10 times and the magnification of the objective lens is 40 times? To get the magnification of the plant cell, we just need to multiply the magnification of the eyepiece, which is 10 times, to the magnification of the objective lens, which is 40 times. Therefore, the answer is 400 times. 
This means that the specimen is magnified 400 times its actual size when seen under the microscope. The microscope is really amazing. Through it, we can understand life even better. Now, let's try to solve this problem. A plant cell is viewed using a 10 times eyepiece magnification and 43 times high power objective. How many times it will be magnified? The plant cell is magnified 430 times. We just multiply the eyepiece use which is 10 times to the objective use which is 43 times, thus 430 times. And that ends our lesson for this video. In our next video, we are going to learn the different levels of biological organization. See you on our next science lesson.